Hello again, I'm Dave Apsley. I'm a forester and a natural resources specialist with Ohio State University Extension. Today I'm at the Vinton Furnace State Forest near MacArthur, Ohio, and I'd like to introduce you to post oak. Post oak is not a species of oak that's widespread in Ohio. It typically grows in the southern part of the state and in the southeastern part of the state in the unglaciated Allegheny Plateau. It's not really widespread even within that region. It's typically only found near dry ridges on the driest of sites with the thinnest of soils. The distribution of post oak is essentially from southern Ohio south, and it becomes much more common as we get into some of the more southern states. It's a relatively small oak. You typically don't see a 30 inch post oak. You might see one this big, 18 or 20, um, which is a large post oak. And then the other thing, it's relatively short. Um, they, add, they probably don't get much higher than 65 or 70 feet in height. So how do we identify post oak? Well, post oak is in the white oak group. So it has lobing, and those lobes do not have the bristle tips like you would find on species in the red oak group. It has a lot of characteristics that are similar to our white oak, but this is what makes it unique. The leaf has five lobes typically, and the top two lobes form kind of a cross shape. They call that cruciform. These leaves can be six to maybe eight inches or so in length. They tend to be very glossy on the surface. And that's pretty typical for species that grow on dry sites. If you think about it, they need to conserve moisture. So the strategy is to have a waxy coating that really reduces moisture loss from that leaf. If we flip that leaf over, it's gonna be a little bit fuzzy. It's going to be much lighter in color. And again, the leaves are in the white oak group, so they won't have bristle tips. They'll be more rounded. Typically five lobes in those top three lobes form a cross shape. As far as the twigs, they're pretty stout. Um, they're light in color. You're going to see light colored linosols or dots along that twig. Like the other oaks, they're going to have clusters of buds at the tip. These buds uh, will typically be several there. This one's got like six or seven buds. Kind of looks like a knuckle sandwich. These are very rounded and pretty large buds for species in the white oak group. They're almost globular or globular in shape or they may be a little bit egg shaped, but these are very rounded. Um, another good characteristic is the acorns. There's a little immature one on here. It's not quite as far as long as I thought it might be. Um, short little stalk. And the cap looks kind of like a white oak, but it's not going to be as bumpy or as warty as a white oak. And then these are very small acorns. They're typically a half inch to maybe up to two thirds of an inch in length. They're very highly preferred by wildlife. And because they're so small, a lot of species can just eat them whole. But again, a cap that covers maybe a third to half of the acorn, but not as bumpy and warty as this white oak cap. This is an immature white oak. They typically have a little quarter inch or so stalk and it's real bumpy warty. This one looks very similar. The actual acorn is somewhat football shaped, but again, very small. Covers, the cap covers about a third of the acorn, but not nearly as bumpy and warty as that of the white oak. And then finally, the bark. Um, in the woods, it's kind of hard to distinguish these, but if you get on these dry ridges, you'll start to see some subtle bark differences. The bark, in my opinion, looks a little tighter you'll see some more vertical streaks or splits in it, and oftentimes it'll have a bit of a twist to it. It's so gro slow growing that you'll actually be able to pick up a twist in that bark, so the grain's probably twisted as well. Not very good self pruners. Um, again, they grow on these dry sites, and when we look up under the canopy, you're gonna see a difference in the lobes. The lobes are much broader, and they're not deeply as deeply cut as the white oak that's growing right next to it. As far as wood use, it's not a super high value wood product because again, it's so limmy, so slow growing. It's hard to get large, large uh, stems to be able to make large pieces of lumber or wood products out of it. But it gets its name post oak because that was probably one of its more common uses. Um, relatively small, slow growing. It's in the white oak group, so it's fairly rot resistant. So it was used a lot for fence posts and firewood. Thank you so much for your time and please take at least part of your day to enjoy it in the woods.